Hi there. In this video, we're going to explain how you can add chat to your Odalo app. So if you want users to be able to message each other like this, they can easily do so. Now, there's a couple ways that you can add chat to your app. The first case is if you want users talking about something that they've already made in your app, whether that's a trip or an assignment or a reservation. Let's go over that an example of that in this travel app. Here, you can see I've got a home screen where I've got a list of trips that the user has created. And then on the trip details page, they can see information about the trip and the users in the travel party. So let's say I wanna have a way for users to be able to chat with each other who are all gonna go on this trip together. So to do that, I can add a button to my trip details screen. And so we'll drag in an action button here and we'll change the icon to be a chat icon. And now we can have this link to a new screen which we will call trip chat. And in the miscellaneous screen template category, uh, you can see we've got one for chat. So that seems like a great place to get started here. So now when users are looking at this particular trip, they can click the chat icon to uh, message each other about the trip that they're about to go on. So the first thing you notice here is we've got a custom list and we need to say what this is a list of. So we can open this drop down, and this is going to be a new collection and this is going to be for messages. And we'll rename the first property to be message text. And then we'll just add two more properties here, one for relationship to the users table. And so this is going to be the user that is the sender of the message. And then we'll add one more property, which is going to relate it, all these messages to which trip they belong to. Great, so now we can create this new collection and we can see this is a list of messages and we're gonna set this filter so it's just the messages for the current trip that are showing up here. And now I can click into the elements of this custom list. And so instead of saying message body text, I can use magic text so it can be the current me message message text. And then here um, we can change this placeholder so that we are showing the name of the user that sent the current message. We can go current message sender full name. And then we'll also include the time that they set the message. So we'll do the current message created date. Great, so now we've got our list of messages working. The next thing that we need to do is uh, hook up the actions when the user clicks the send button. So we're going to have this uh, create and we'll select messages for our collection. So this action is going to create a new message and the message text is going to come from the form input on the screen, which is the message text input. So that's what the user is typing in right here. And then we'll set the sender to be the logged in user and the trip to be the current trip. And that's it. Now we've got it set up so that users who are planning a trip together can message each other about that specific trip. But what if you want your users to be able to have a chat about something that's not tied to a particular topic, like a trip or a reservation or an exercise. To explore how to do that, let's look at another app example. This is a use case we see most commonly with apps that are oriented around some kind of social network. So to do this, we'll set up our home screen where we're going to need to add a new list. And so we'll make this a custom list here. And we'll drag this in. And now this list um, when we say, what is this a list of? We're going to add a new collection, and this is going to be a list of conversations. And so a conversation can have a name, and we'll add one more property, which is a relationship to users. And a conversation, of course, can have multiple users, and a user can be part of multiple conversations. So we're going to choose this last option here. And we'll call this uh, conversation members. We'll also add another relationship to the users table, and this way we can see which was the user that created the conversation as well. And we'll call it creator. Now that we've made that collection, we can have this be a list of conversations. And instead of it being all conversations, we want it to be the conversations that the logged in user is a member of. So we'll choose that option here. Now this is a list of all of the logged in users conversations. Now, the next thing we need to do is to configure how the title for each list item is working. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So first of all, we're gonna remove this subtitle because we don't need that. 
And now for this title, what we actually want to do is have this be smart so that it's showing uh, the name of the user that the logged in user is talking to. So for example, if there was a conversation between Ben and Jim, when Ben looks at this, he should see that this is a conversation with Jim. But when Jim looks at the same record, he should see it's a conversation with Ben. And so the way to make that work is to actually uh, take this title and we'll go ahead and add another spot here to add a place for an image so we can see the picture of the user that we're talking with as well. So we'll drag an image in uh, to this first list item. Of course, we'll make it much smaller here and we'll edit the style so that it can be nice and round. Let's set this to be 30 by 30 and we'll turn up the rounding on this image. Great. Now, what I'm going to do is get that lined up right and I'm going to select the image and this title spot and I'm going to make these a list. So now we've got our outer list of conversations and this inner list is going to be a list of users and of course not all the users but just the ones that are members of the current conversation. So now for every conversation this will list out Ben and Jim. And then what we want to do is add one more filter so that the user that's logged in doesn't see themselves in the list. So now if we say the email address is not equal to the logged in user's email, now this will just show Jim if I'm logged in as Ben and vice versa. And I can adjust the preview here so it's just showing what one would look like because that's all you would ever see here. And so now we've got our list set up. So we've got conversations and then we've got an inner list here that's going to show the uh, users that are members of the conversation, but only the ones that aren't the logged in user. And so now we can customize the title text here. So it can be the current user full name. And then for the image, we'll need to add a property to our users, um, which will be a profile picture. So we'll add an image property and set up that. And now when we go back to this list within the list here, we can select that image and have it be the current user profile picture. Great. So now we've got our list of conversations. The next thing we need to do is to set up what happens when a user clicks on one of these conversations. So we can select this list item and then we're gonna add an action which is going to be a link to a new screen. And this will be our conversation screen. And this is going to work very similar to the example that we were just shown in the previous app. So again, we're going to go down to miscellaneous, we'll choose our chat template, we'll do create screen here. And now we've got uh, this custom list. And we say, what is this a list of? We need to add a collection now for messages. So we'll go ahead and add that. So it'll be messages, we'll customize this name property to be message text. And then we'll add a relationship to the conversation. And we'll choose this first one so that a conversation can have multiple messages, but a message just belongs to one conversation. And then we will also add a, another relationship to our users collection. And here we're saying a message belongs to just one user. And this will be our sender property. Great, so now we can create this collection. This custom list now is a set to be a list of messages. We'll change it from all messages to just the ones for the current conversation. And then we'll set up the magic text for the message body that shows up in this chat bubble. So it'll be current message, message text here. We'll set up the information about who sent the message and when. So we'll do current message, sender, full name. And then we'll also include the current message created date so we know what time they sent the message. Now we'll also hook up the send button here. Um, so we'll add an action to create a new message, the message text will come from that form input on the bottom of the screen there, and then the conversation will be set to the current conversation, and the sender will be the logged in user. Okay, great, so now we've got a way to view our conversations, we can click into them and see the chat in that conversation, and we can add new messages. And there's one last thing to add here, which is the ability to uh, set up a new conversation. So to create a new conversation, we need to add a button to our home screen. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll drag in this action button here. 
And then we will have this link to a new screen, which is going to be our start new conversation screen. And for that, we will pick uh, this list that has a search on it here and we'll do create screen. And now I'm going to move that screen uh, down below my home screen so I can see that a little better. And I'm going to um, remove this plus button and I'm going to turn on the left icon so we have a link back to our home screen. And then I'm going to uh, replace this list with a custom one. So I'm going to click plus, go down to my list section, and we'll add in a custom list here. And when we say, what is this a list of? This is going to be a list of users, because we need to pick which user we want to start a new conversation with. And so we can have that be all users. We can add a filter so that this does not include the logged in users, so they don't see themselves, because obviously you wouldn't need to start a conversation with yourself. So we can set this for the email address to not be equal to the logged in user's email. So they won't see themselves in the list. The other thing that we can do is add another filter so that this uh, search box is working as well. So we'll do add another filter where the uh, full name is uh, what the user types in into the search term in the form and put on that screen. Okay, great. Now let's set up uh, the list itself a little better. So we're going to remove this subtitle for the title. We will replace that with the current user's full name. And then we'll also, kind of like we did before on the home screen, we'll add a component to this custom list. Um, that'll be the image for the profile picture. So we can see uh, who we're going to be starting a new conversation with. So add this image in, uh, we'll set it up to be uh, 30 by 30, and we'll turn up the rounding. Great, and now we'll set this image to be the current user's profile picture. Okay, so now we're doing pretty good. And what we need to do next is uh, say what happens when the user, the logged in user picks somebody from this list that they wanna start. So to do that, I'm gonna select the elements in this custom list. So I'm going to double click to select full name. I'm gonna hold down shift and also select the background card and the image as well and I'm going to group them, and now I'm gonna add some actions to this group. So first, we're going to create a new conversation. So I just select conversation as the collection here. For the name of the conversation, I'm gonna have this be the logged in user full name, and then I'm just gonna do slash, and then also include the current user full name. So this might say Ben slash Jim. For the creator, that'll be the logged in user, and we'll click done. So now we've created the conversation. And now we're gonna add a couple of updates to that new conversation. So I'll click select an update action. For the record, we'll select new conversation. And for the conversation members, here we're going to add the current user. And then we're going to repeat that with another update action for the new conversation. And for the conversation members, we're also going to add the login user. So now both of those users are going to be part of this new conversation. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to link uh, off to the conversation screen. So that's gonna create the new conversation, add both people to it, and then it's gonna link the logged in user uh, right up for to the conversation screen so that they can start chatting. Now, we're also going to make sure that this back button uh, here in the app bar for the left hand spot is going to link the users home because we don't want them when they click that to go back to start new conversation they're going to assume that they're wanting to go back to home so we'll change this link uh, to be home and then we'll change the transition as well now we're good to go there and there's just one more thing now that we can add to our chat app and that's the ability to know if any of your conversations have any unread messages so to do that we're going to add a new component to this custom list. So in addition to having the name of the person you're talking to, we're going to add, uh, in this case, we'll use an icon here. Uh, so we'll go into buttons and we'll grab an icon. And of course you can pick whatever icon you like, whether it's uh, something that says new here or an exclamation point or even just a dot. Uh, you can pick whatever looks good to you. Now, of course, the trick is to only get this uh, 
new messages icon to only show up if the current conversation has new messages. So to do that, we need to add a new collection to our database, uh, which we're going to call read statuses. And read statuses are going to have a few different properties. One is going to be a relationship to the user, so we know which user the read status belongs to. And then they're also going to be related to the uh, particular conversation. So we know which conversation the read status belongs to. OK, we're good on read statuses. There's one other property that we need to add in order to make this work to our conversations collection. And this is going to be a date and time property called uh, last message sent date. Okay, now what we can do with this uh, new message icon is we can change its visibility to be only sometimes visible. And this is going to be visible if the current conversation um, read statuses count is equal to zero. We're going to add a couple filters. So first of all, we're just talking about read statuses that belong to the logged in user. So we're going to say the uh, user email is equal to the logged in user email. And then next, we're only we only want that to show up for read messages, read statuses rather, where they were created after the last message sent date in the conversation. So to summarize again how this is working, this new message indicator icon will only be visible if the current user for that conversation doesn't have any read statuses that took place after the last message was sent. So now that we've got that working, we need to set up the actual creation of the read status records. So first, we need to make it so that whenever a user views a conversation, we're going to add a read status record. So if we click on this uh, conversation screen here, you can see there's an ability to add an action as soon as the user visits the screen. And so we're going to add a create. And so this is going to create a read status. And for the user, we'll set this to be the logged in user. And for the conversation, we'll set it to be the current conversation. Great. So now anytime the user views a conversation, we'll set a read status for them. We also need to set one when they send a new message. So we've already got an action on the send icon to create a message. Now we're going to add another action to create another read status. So we will add that. We'll set the user to be the logged in user and the conversation to be the current conversation. OK, great. We're doing pretty good here. One last thing we need to add is on this create, action here, where we're actually creating the new messages being sent, we also need to add one more thing that happens. So we're going to create the message, we're going to create the read status. We also need to update the current conversation so that its last message sent date, which is the new property we just added, is set to be the current time. So what's going to happen is we're going to create the message, then we're going to update the conversation so we know when the last message sent date was. And then we're going to create a read status so that we know that the sender of this has seen that message that was just created. And that's it. That's how you can create a fully standalone chat app where users can create new conversations with other people in your app. They can send messages to each other. And then they can also have read statuses to indicate um, who has seen the message or if there's any new things that they need to update themselves on. Finally, the last thing that you can add to a lot of chat apps, particularly if you're planning on it being a mobile app, is push notifications. So again, we're going to go back to the send button. So in addition to creating the message, updating the conversations last read date, and creating the read status, we can add one final action here, which is going to trigger a notification. And for the recipients, you can have this be the current conversation uh, conversation members all. And we'll go to all the conversation members, except of course for the logged in user that's triggering the push notification. And then for the title of the message, you can have that uh, come from the form input, the message text. And for the screen, you can have them link right here to the conversation screen once they click on the no push notification icon. 
And there you go, a fully built out chat application right here on Adalo.